It's Ron Brown with Tech for Seniors. Yes, the Galaxy Watch 4 is out. I got mine last Friday, four days ago, and I'm putting it through the paces. Today, we're going to talk about fall detection. Now, I have an upcoming video called The Misunderstood Galaxy 4 Watch. I got the name of this from the last video I made, which was a very popular one, called The Misunderstood Fitbit Sense Watch. Now, as a full disclaimer, I purchased the Fitbit Sense and the Galaxy 4 Watch with my hard-earned retired money. I don't get uh, paid to sponsor this video. These uh, opinions are my own. So in this upcoming video, I'm going to do something special, and you'll be sure and want to watch this before purchasing this watch. I'm going to look at the five health features from a physician's point of view. I'm going to describe what is the health feature, how does it work, and from a medical point of view, based on my 35 years as a clinical physician working in the emergency department, delivering babies, and in the hospital, I'm going to tell you my personal point of view on what I feel about this feature. And you remember the routine. Uh, if you like this video, please click the like, and if you want to see more of them, please subscribe. Fall detection. What is it? Well, in order to have fall detection in a device, you need an accelerometer. This is a little chip that goes in the device that you're purchasing. And in this case, it's a, it's a watch. And you'll see an example on the diagram, and particularly up on the right corner of a chip on an accelerometer on a device. The accelerometer measures gravity and movement and can identify if you have a fall through the software. Pretty cool. Now, the Fitbit Sense cannot do this. It does not have an, an accelerometer, so it can't do fall detection. The Apple Watch can, and the Galaxy 4 Watch can as well. So let's look at how this works. All right, how does fall detection work? Well, there's the act of falling, and people can fall either forward, backward, or sideways. And as a result of the fall, the accelerometer through the software identifies this and then sends emergency notification through your phone. All right, I want you to stop right there. Before you decide to use this technology for your loved one to identify a fall or a life-saving event, I want you to be sure and watch this video. This is a video that I found in my research and this is the YouTube site is called All Star Space, and I'll put the link in the notes below, but I've given you the link on the screen to the video that I want you to watch. In this video, this couple decided to test the actual ability of these devices to identify a fall. And they used two devices, one on each arm. One was the Apple Watch 5, and the other was the Galaxy Watch 3. And so they had, um, they had a watch on each wrist and they had mats out and they tried to mimic falls and have the watch go off and see what type of falls would be recorded. And they found some very interesting information. Now, I'm going to tell you, don't do this. This could cause injury and, and really harm to yourself. I tried it a couple of times and I'm sitting on a big bruise. I'm not going to show it to you because it's embarrassing. Now here's the deal. They found that the identification of the fall and the type of movement that caused the fall was quite different between both watches. So the type of movement that would trigger a fall on the Apple Watch was actually different than the type of movement that would cause a fall with an identification on the, on the um, Galaxy Watch. Two different approaches. Now, the second thing that they found was it wasn't that easy to make the watch go off. In other words, they had to fall pretty hard and try pretty hard to make this work. So does this technology really work for our loved ones? Well, we don't know that. Um, certainly Apple tells us it does, 
and Galaxy, and, and Samsung tells us it does, but there is no clinical trial or any body of evidence that really says this technology works. Now, Apple has had the ability to detect falls for a number of years now, and there is plenty of anecdotal information on the wire service that says, yes, um, I, I fell, I used the Apple Watch to uh, get the ambulance there and it saved my life. There's, but when you sell 100 million, 100 million watches a year, you would expect that to occur. So how valid is this type of technology? You must watch this video before you purchase this watch if you're looking to use it for fall detection. This is so important. It's a, it's a real eye opener. The fall detection feature is not turned on by default on the Galaxy Watch 4, so you'll need to turn it on manually if you want to use it. It can only be enabled through the Galaxy Wearable app, so make sure the watch is connected to the mobile device first. Now you'll see in the uh, image today, you'll see that uh, this is the display that you're going to see uh, on your phone, and you'll see that it, uh, we're going to go down to the advanced features and click on that and you'll see it says Home Key SOS Gestures. So once we click on that, we'll see the next menu come up here, and you'll see at the top it says SOS. I want you to click that. Now at the top, you'll see uh, two options that you have. You have the ability to manually send an SOS, and this is when you click the Home button, which is the top button on the right-hand side of the watch, three times and this will send an emergency alert. We'll talk about that in just a minute. You can turn this on or off. So this would give you the ability if you fell and it didn't send the alert that you would be able to manually send an alert. The second of course toggle switch is when you fall. So if you don't turn this on it won't work. So this must be turned on to detect a fall. Then as we move down the list you'll see who to send the emergency notification to. Alright, so we're going to look at this and we're going to send, of course, I'm going to send the emergency notification in the form of a text message to my wife Gail Brown. You may also choose to choose the same person to send an SOS call, but you could also define that as 911. So in the case of emergency, when an alert was sent, it would send it to two locations. One would be, of course, 911, and the other one would be your um, whoever you have defined for the emergency notification. Now, the SOS with the home key, this requires the use of the device's location. So when you send an SOS from your watch, your location is shared with your emergency contact so they know where you are. Now, you can disable the collection and processing of your location information at any time by turning off this function. So after a fall, your watch will alert you for 60 seconds with a pop-up sound and vibration. You can cancel the alert or swipe to send the SOS right away. If you don't respond for 60 seconds, the SOS message will be sent to the emergency contacts that you have set up in the Galaxy Wearable app. So let's see how this works. In order to send an emergency notification with your watch, you have to be connected to your phone. This connection is a Bluetooth connection. So this provides all the limitations for Bluetooth connections. Let's look at your watch. First of all, your watch must be worn and it must be charged. So if you've taken your watch off and you leave it by the bedside table at night, this isn't going to work because when you get up to have a pee in the night and you fall, your watch must be on. So you must have the ability to charge your watch. In other words, you have to take it off, put it on the wireless charger and charge it and you must do that once a day. Now the connection to your phone, as I said, is through Bluetooth. So your phone must be in an immediate area that you're in, not in the car, in the garage, or out on the street. So you must actually have your phone and your phone must be turned on. It could be sitting in a wireless charging stand, but it must be turned on and connected to a charged watch on your wrist. 
Now, the other option that you should seriously consider is purchasing the watch as an LTE version. And this LTE version has an eSIM in it. What we mean by an eSIM, this is actually a chip that's in the watch, so you physically don't actually have to put a SIM card in. So the question comes up with these LTE versions is would you need to have a uh, smartphone or would they be standalone? And this is a difficult question and it probably depends where in the world and what country you're in and what service that you're connecting to. Uh, it is certainly possible that they could be standalone devices and not needing a cell phone but that would be dependent on how the individual provider would be uh, configuring the device. Uh, cur currently, to activate the phone, you need to send a code from a smartphone, and this pairs the two together. But it would be possible to uh, send the um, to to actually have this device activate itself. And I expect in some parts of the world and some services this will likely occur. All right. What is my recommendation as a physician based on this evidence? Well, there's no clinical data to support that this actually works. It's interesting when I looked at Samsung's marketing material today that there's no mention of fall detection at all. Also, the Fitbit Sense it does not have an accelerometer in it. Most of the information we have about this is anecdotal information from the Apple Watch. The watch requires to be connected to a cell th phone through Bluetooth. Both must be charged and on. They both must be worn 24-7. The Galaxy 4 will require daily charging. And the technology is complicated, and you'll ne carefully need to select who you're going to choose this. Uh, consider an LTE version. You may look at exploring some simpler options for some people. Just remember that the Amazon Echo products all have emergency notification, as does the Google Nest, and ADT has a very extensive uh, emergency notification devices that you can wear, such as a, a watch or a pendant around your neck. So there are other ways of simpler technology than using fall detection on a watch. Well, thanks for watching fall detection on the Galaxy 4 watch. And be sure and watch my upcoming video called The Misunderstood Galaxy 4 Watch. In that, I'm going to talk about ECG, blood pressure, oximetry, and snoring with the diagnosis of sleep apnea. More to come, The Misunderstood Galaxy 4 Watch. I should have it out probably this next week, and I'll put the link in uh, the show notes when it's out. So until we see you again, Ron Brown from Tech for Senior.